Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do a Bible study. So you're going to hear people calling me. It's okay. We're just going to figure out how to do this Bible study thing with littles. And that's something that I really wanted to talk about is I want to talk about how are people like spending time with God or just doing your Bible study with children because it's not always an easy thing. And as much as it would be nice to say like, oh, you know, wake up before the kids or you know even at night like if you just stayed up a little bit a, a little bit later and you know did your bible study after the kids go to bed the problem sometimes with that is that kids wake up right or kids choose not to go to sleep and so when that happens it's like it's almost it almost feels like okay well i'm not able to get my quality time in with god but you can right you can still get that time in with kids it's just about like finding those pockets of time where you can sit down and do what you need to do and so today i'm actually gonna do a bible study with you um just to show you kind of like what my process is when i'm sitting down and doing like a dedicated bible study because sometimes when i'm spending time with god it doesn't look like a dedicated dedicated Bible study and I might do like another video on all the different ways I spend time with God especially as a mom of two toddlers uh, but I know for me in this season I've been really intentional about making sure that when I am like spending time in the word I'm really thinking critically and asking questions I feel like when I ask questions it helps me to understand it helps me to understand the Bible a bit better and so my method like there are a lot of different methods and strategies that people use to read the Bible there's the soap method method the silk method like there's so many different methods but I actually like to do the question method and so I don't really know who the originator of this method was but but basically what I do when I'm reading the Bible is I ask these questions who what when where why and how and I ask these questions pretty much with every single verse like who's talking um, when was this what is actually happening how does this tie back to the gospel or how does this um, you know speak to Jesus right like where did where is Jesus in this this scripture and um, where is the Holy Spirit in the scripture where is God in the scripture like I ask these different questions as I'm reading through every single verse and sometimes it can be tedious but I feel like it gives me a deeper understanding of what I'm actually reading Reading, and it also makes it to where I'm not centering myself in the Bible because something that I had a very bad habit of doing is reading the Bible like it was like my own personal manifesto. I had the bad habit of reading it like, oh, what does this do for me? What is this? Like I was centering myself instead of centering Jesus, centering God, like I was centering myself in it. And that's very dangerous because it's not about me right like when you read the word like it's not supposed to be i realized it's not supposed to be about me and i was being convicted of like girl you're entering you're inserting yourself into a story that yes i'm supposed to learn something from this I'm, I'm learning attributes and qualities about god and how i should act and how i should behave but it's not about like asking you shall receive it's like okay but god was not saying right here that if i ask him for a lamborghini i'm gonna receive it like that's not how this works but when we insert ourselves as the center of scripture we can make that mistake right and that was the mistake that i was making and so i had to figure out a way to just be able to read the word and approach the word and get what i actually needed to get from it and to really be convicted by it and so what i like to do first before i even jump into a bible study well actually i'm going to share so i do these bible studies by the daily grace co uh and actually i don't really do their bible study because like some some of the bible studies are really good like some of the devotionals for the day are really good and then others are just like mm, it didn't really go where i wanted it to go in terms of like the depth of understanding the scripture and i'm in a season of life where i am focused on i want to understand the scripture i want to understand the context i want to understand who's being spoken to and all those things so sometimes like the the um, devotional doesn't quite hit that perfectly but it is i do like this in terms of it really breaks down what we should be reading each day and so Right now, I'm doing a study on Nehemiah and I'm doing a study on the Psalms. I previously did a study on, I believe it was First Peter. Um, so I've done quite a few of their studies. I really do enjoy like how they break things down. But when I decide or when I am getting into my Bible study time, the first thing I like to do is just say a quick prayer. So I already did that. I said a prayer. Um, or if I don't like enter in prayer, like if I'm not like just hardcore praying, what I will do is I will listen to, I'm looking up at my, uh, my Alexa, I don't want to say her name because she'd be turning on, but, um, I will, you know, ask 
for a worship playlist to be played or something like that and I would just like get into a state of worship so I'll do one of those two things before I actually like start in on my bible study something that I like to do I like to do my bible study out loud I like to do my bible study like I like to read and answer the questions and ask the questions out loud because I have little people listening and I truly believe that in this season of life you know I feel like quiet time, not, not that it's a myth, and I do think that quiet time is important. I think quiet time with God is important, but I also feel like as a mom, as a homemaker, as a primary caregiver, I feel like it's my job in this season to train them up, right? And so in doing that, I like to read the scripture out loud so they can hear. I like to talk through like the questions that I ask myself. I like to talk through those things out loud. I'll even ask them, you know, and they don't, they're not at an age where they're really responding or, or you know, really able to fully grasp what's being said, but I know they hear me. Like I know they hear me. I know that they're getting something, especially like when I'm reading Matthew, like sometimes I'll just open up the Bible and I'll just read, you know, a chapter from somewhere. And a lot of times when I'm like going through the story of Jesus or different things like that, I'm able to talk to them about Jesus and explain to them like, who Jesus is, what Jesus did for us, you know, who God is, like what are attributes of God. Like I'm able to explain these things to them. And so I really enjoy reading the scripture out loud because I know they're listening, you know, and I know that this is my job as their mom to train them up in the word. And so I feel like this is like something that we do a lot is during breakfast, I'll just read um, a chapter or so to them while they're eating breakfast. And it's just a great time for me to just tell them who Jesus is, right? Because otherwise, like they're not reading it for themselves right now. So I'm giving it to them. So anyway, today's, um, yes, baby. Um, I've also gotten really comfortable with interruptions. It happens and it just, it is what it is. Yes, baby. And I'm not gonna lie, it used to frustrate me to no end because like, I'm so used to quiet time. I'm so used to like, you know, pre kids where I could spend, you know, an hour, two hours in the morning and get in my word and just go deep. But I've just come to realize that, you know, we're in a different season, right? Motherhood is a completely different season and we have to figure out how to make it work with where we are. So this is really what it looks like. Okay, listen, are you gonna listen? Are you gonna read with me? I'm actually reading Nehemiah chapter one, verses four through 11. So it says, as soon as I heard these words, I sat down and wept and mourned for days, and I continued fasting and praying before the God of heaven. And I said, O Lord God of heaven, the great and awesome God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments, let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer of your servant that I now pray before you day and night for the people of Israel, your servants, confessing the sins of the people of Israel, which we have sinned against you. Even I and my father's house have sinned. We have acted very corruptly against you and have not kept the commandments, the statutes and the rules that you commanded your servant Moses. Remember the word that you commanded your servant Moses saying, if you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the peoples. But if you return to me and keep my commandments and do them, through your outcasts are in the utmost parts of heaven. From there, I will gather them and bring them to the place that I have chosen to make my name dwell there. They are your servants and your people whom you have redeemed by your great power and by your strong hand. O oh Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant and to the prayer of your servants who delight to fear your name and give success to your servant today and grant him mercy in the sight of this man. Now I was cut bearer to the king. Okay, so when I read the scripture, like I, I like the first pass, I usually read the scripture like two or three times. But the first time I'm reading just to like get my bearings and gain some context. And so the first thing that I'm asking myself when I'm reading is who, what, and where. Okay, so who is writing or who is speaking? Like I'm getting context on who are the people that we're dealing with right now. Then I'm trying to figure out what is actually happening. Like what is happening here in context? And then where are we? So sometimes it might be, where are we in history, right? Or where are we in terms of like the people, right? So where are these people? So I'm looking for these clues. So I, I know based off of my study time yesterday, I know that right now the 
person that we're speaking of, like the who, is Nehemiah. Now, I, Nehemiah is written by, like the editor or the person that wrote it is actually Ezra, but this is a first person account of Nehemiah. So this is a first person account of Nehemiah's experience. One thing about Nehemiah that I didn't realize, I've read Nehemiah several times, but I didn't realize just how important prayer is until I've taken the second pass through understanding Nehemiah. Nehemiah really challenges and convicted me to spend more time in prayer, which, you know, I feel like a lot of times in our minds, we think we're praying, but really we're not. Like really we're just like begging God for something or we're, you know, like of course having a conversation with God, I think that's important, but I feel like we don't take intentional, well, let me not say we, I don't take intentional time for prayer. And so I've really been convicted of that as I've been reading through Nehemiah. And uh, this whole section that I read is about Nehemiah's prayer. Um, what happened is, and to, to, uh, to explain the what is happening and the where, so Nehemiah received news in just a few verses prior to this, he received news that the walls of Jerusalem were broken, right? It says the wall of Jerusalem is broken down and its gates are destroyed by fire. So, so he, someone came and told him this and Nehemiah was greatly you know, distressed behind this. And so verse four says, as soon as I heard these words, I sat down and wept and mourned for days and I continued fasting and praying before the God of heaven. This is so powerful because literally as soon as he got this bad news, his first response was to fast and pray, was to seek God. And that right there is so important. And it was like, as I'm reading this, it's a reminder for me, like, this is the what, okay? So like, what happened? What happened is that he received this news and his first response was to pray and to fast. And whenever I'm reading the word, that's how I think things through. Like I think things through of, okay, what just happened? what literally just happened so what just happened is that he got this bad news and he immediately went back to the father right and that's a reminder for me right that's a reminder for me of this is how i should act right this is how i should act as a believer is when something happens when i'm grieved when i am saddened my first response needs to be to go into prayer go into fasting and that's i'm gonna be honest that's not my default my default is not to like run to God first, right? Usually I'm trying to problem solve. I'm trying to do all these different things. I'm trying to figure it out on my own understanding. And this is just reminding me like, okay, this is how it's supposed to work, right? This is how it really works. This is how we actually are able to fight the battles, right? Is by going and seeking God first. So then a common question that I ask myself as I'm reading through the scripture is why, okay? Why is this happening? Why? Is this someone's response? But I also try to use scripture to inform and tell me why. So my first thought when I'm reading this scripture and I'm like, okay, well, why is this his first response? And I'm I'm realizing and I'm thinking forward of like, you know, this is his first response because he knows where his help is coming from. And Nehemiah has intimacy with God, which is something that I desire. So now I'm continuing to read forward it for, further, and it's saying in verse 5, And I said, O Lord God of heaven, the great and awesome God, who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments. And I'm, real, I'm thinking to myself, I'm realizing like, wow, right here, Nehemiah is telling me how he prays. And he starts off adoring God, right? About really just like, praising God right here for who he is. And these, these are telling me the attributes of God, right? So attributes of God, the, he's great. He's awesome. He keeps his covenant. He's steadfast in love. These are the attributes of God. And so whenever I am in my study, which I can't find my pen now, but whenever I'm in study, I underline these words. These words are currently underlined. And I, you know, I've written adoration of God, right? This is, this is how we start our prayers by adoring God. So even just in that, that convicts me because sometimes when I start praying, I'd be like, God, this is what's going on. Like it's almost a dear diary. And it's not that it's wrong. It's just that if I want my prayers answered and if I really want to, you know, show my faith. So essentially this entire passage is showing me how to pray, right? So it starts out with adoration. Then it moves into asking God to hear our prayers, right? 
Um, and again, I try not to center myself. So I'm not, it's, this is not like this is a recipe for how to pray, but it's just something for me to think about. Like, what am I including or not including in my prayers? Are my prayers constant, you know, me crying about something? Or am I, you know, really seeking God's wisdom, right? Like, what am I actually doing in my prayer time? That is what I'm learning here. Hey, baby. So after he hey. Hey. Okay, slide over. Hey. All right, hey. Hey. Hey, hey. You missed out on me reading the words, so now you need to pay attention. Okay, so after he's adored God in verse like six, then he goes on to ask God to hear him. Editing K here. Oh my gosh, do you hear King saying two? He's he's reading the number two, and I totally missed this in the moment. But wow, he literally said too because he was like reading the chapters so cool you're his prayers right and how he does that is he does it uh, like coming next he does it by then repenting and confessing right and i think it's so interesting how he repents because and how he confesses because it says this it says hey hey you need to listen you need to listen Look. let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer of your servant that i now pray before you day and night for the people of israel your servants confessing the sins of the people of Israel, which we have sinned against you. Even I and my father's house have sinned, right? We have acted very correctly against you and have not kept the commandments, the statutes, and the rules that you commanded your servant Moses. So right there, he is repenting and he is asking for, or like he, he's repenting and he's confessing even things that he doesn't even know, right? He's just he's just confessing because he's like, I just want to get it all on the table. Whatever is not right within me, within my family, within the people of Israel, like I am putting this out there to you guys. After that, he says, remember the word you commanded your servant Moses saying, and then he proceeds to pray the scripture, right? Praying God's promises and praying the scripture. That is so powerful. And as much as I would love to say, like, I pray the scripture, I know that a lot of times my prayers are not the scripture, right? Like, it's not, I'm not praying actual scriptures. I'm praying about myself. I'm praying about my family. I'm praying about my kids, uh, you know, my husband, whatever, whatever circumstances going on. But I'm not actually praying God's word. And so this is like, so like, this just, it's a reminder, right? It's a reminder. And again, not to center myself, but just to see how God has worked Mama. through other people, right? And the example that has already been set forth that I can then follow, right? That I can then follow to show my faith as an act of obedience, right? So then, you know, Nehemiah goes into, you know, what God's uh, word has said, like he prays the scripture. So he says, but he says, remember the word that you commanded your servant Moses saying, if you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the people. But if you return to me and keep my commandments and do them, um, <laughs> though your outcasts are in the utmost, uttermost parts of heaven, from there, I will gather them and bring them to the place that I've chosen to make my name dwell there, right? So he's praying the scripture. He's praying what God actually said to Moses. That's so powerful. That's so powerful right there. And then once he does that, he makes his ass, right? So so Nehemiah has done all these things. He's he's adored God, right? He's praised God. He's, um, you know, asked God to hear his prayer. He has repented, right? He is, he's confessed and repented. He's prayed the scripture, right? He's prayed God's word back to him. And then only after that does he ask for what he desires, right? And what he desired is give success to your servant today and grant him mercy in the sight of this man, right? In the sight of the king, which will, which you learn about as you continue to read this chapter and read um, Nehemiah. Only after all that does Nehemiah actually ask for what he wants, right? The last thing of this chapter that's really, really important is that the word says at the very end, now I was cupbearer to the king. This is such a crucial piece of information. I used to not notice these things when I was reading the Bible, but now I do because I ask myself, okay, who, what, when, where, why, how, right? Why is this important? Why is it important that it is written, now I was cupbearer to the king? And this is why it's so, good job, baby. Go ahead. This is why it's so important to ask questions as you're reading the word, because otherwise you miss key points, right? Why is a very important question to ask as you are trying to understand the word? And it's not about questioning God. It's about you. Like, it's about me using the scripture to interpret scripture. And so 
why is it important that it was included to say, now I was cupbearer to the king? It's because your position matters. Your position is important. And especially in this, in the scripture, in the context of what we're talking about here, his position is relevant and it makes me think back to Esther's position, right? For such a time as this, right? So Nehemiah having the position of the cupbearer to the king puts him in proximity to someone that can help the people, right? And uh, I mean, the whole story of Nehemiah, Nehemiah builds the wall. He rebuilds the wall of Jerusalem. And so it's like who, who he's in proximity to is very important in the grand scheme of things because when you read the rest of the chapters, um, you realize that he is, you know, there, there's other kings that are against him, but the king that he was cupbearer to, yay! Because of his proximity to the king, he was able to get resources and support and things that he probably wouldn't have been able to do if he did not have the position of being close to the king, which as the cupbearer, he is very close to the king at the time. So, um, so the proximity is important, but also it reveals how God puts us in positions on purpose right and we don't know that if we don't stay in the word and if we don't stay in prayer and that's what was that's what's been revealed to me in doing this nehemiah bible study i'm actually much further in nehemiah than this but this is probably one of my favorite parts of nehemiah because it has shown me how to pray intentionally right there are going to be times that i just sit down and just cry to God and just have a conversation. I'm just like, I'm over it, right? I I'm solving it, right? Um, but there's other times that I do want to be a lot more intentional with my prayer, especially in times where I'm feeling troubled, where my feel where my spirit is feeling most troubled. I want to be able to pray intentionally. So when we talk about the who, what, when, where, why, and how, the who in this situation is Nehemiah, okay? Nehemiah is the who. We can also say that the people of Israel are the who. Um, Thank you, baby. Um, so we can also say the people of, the, of people of Israel are the who because he is praying on behalf of the people of Israel. So, um, so that is the who. What is happening is that the wall of Jerusalem is broken, right? It's broken down. Fire has been set to it. Um, the gate has been destroyed. Like everything has been destroyed. So there's a lot of things happening right now. So, um, so that's kind of like the what, like the context of things. Um, so who, what, when? So the when actually occurred earlier in the chapter. It didn't really occur in this set of scripture that I'm reading right now. But basically, thank you. Um, but basically, the win for this is after the exile of the Jews, right? So after the Jews have been exiled um, and basically sent out of Jerusalem and the wall was broken, like that's like the time period that we're in. So Jerusalem has been under attack right and that is kind of the win the context behind all this the why with all this this is all happening because the wall has broken right because the wall because jerusalem has been destroyed jerusalem is under attack that is why all this is sparked that is why nehemiah is so grieved right now he is so grieved because he got news that this is what was happening and because of his intimacy and relationship with god because of his prayer life with god um and you can just tell like you can tell based off of reading this like Nehemiah goes there with God like him and God he he is always in the room praying you know and he's always in relationship with God and you can tell that by this prayer and I feel like that's what's just like so important and so powerful about this part of the scripture and this part of you know really setting the tone and the other thing that I think about when I'm reading this and the why like why is this included like I always ask myself when I'm reading scripture why was this included in the first place and I believe that this Nehemiah's prayer is included especially here in the beginning to show that Nehemiah is a praying man okay he is a man of prayer he is a man that knows when and how to seek God and how to get answers from God and what I really love is that it says it, at verse four, as soon as I heard these words, I sat down and wept and mourned for days. And I continued fasting and praying before the God of heaven. That means that he did this for a long time. How often do I pray about something just one or two times and I'm like mad at God? Like, why haven't you answered this? Or why haven't I got this yet? And it just like this just reminds me like, oh, you have to stay in prayer. Like, this is why this is included. It's included to show and expose in me and to convict me. And like, hey, you can't just think that you prayed about this thing one time and you're going to get the answer for it tomorrow, right? Like, that's not how this works. And so I really like to approach the Bible in terms of 
being convicted, like allowing the word to convict and expose in me where I'm falling short, right? And that's definitely like my prayer life is definitely an area that, you know, what remember I report cards to say needs improvement, like baby, my needs improvement, okay? I'm good for like I can definitely pray, but praying the scripture, making sure that I worship first, like making sure that I am, you know, confessing my own sins or repenting in in my prayers like that's something that i'm not always doing and so this is just such a great reminder of the importance of how we pray um but also i i really feel and i feel like one of my favorite parts of this is just this last part where he says now i was compared to the king because it reminds me of like whatever position in life i'm in so even in talking about my position as a mom like this position is very important and i need to be praying so that I can receive help and receive support in that because this is an important position that I'm in. That is what I got from this Bible study today. I don't, in hindsight, I'm like, man, did I really cover my questions thing? I hope that you were able to see how I use questions to really help me understand the word. For me, it's all about making sure that I am asking questions as I'm reading the scripture and making sure that like as I'm reading, I'm really understanding the full context of things and not just centering myself into the story. Now, at some parts, do I try to figure out like, okay, how does this apply to me? Of course, right? And I feel like that's the beauty of like the SOAP method and, and all those other methods is that they really focus on how does it apply to you or how can you apply it? That is just what I got from this Bible study today. I really enjoy sitting down doing Bible studies and I really enjoy just like taking the kids along with me and just letting it happen the way it's going to happen, right? Like it's not going to always be perfect. It's not going to always look perfect, but I feel like as long as I am intentional about this time spent, that's what truly matters. And so sometimes I don't get a ton, you know, sometimes I'm only able to answer, you know, who is talking or like what is happening. But further than that, I'm not able to really deep dive into things. But I really do enjoy like when I have like companion studies or um, like sometimes I'll use my laptop and I'll look up like commentaries to understand certain scriptures. And that has also been helpful too. And just me really being able to dissect and answer like who, what, when, where, why, how, like how does this point back to the gospel, things like that. So, um, so yeah, that is my Nehemiah, well, Nehemiah chapter one, verses four through 11. Let me know in the comments what you got from this section. If you were convicted about anything in this section, I feel like for me, this um, this passage in particular convicts me on my own prayer life and what is my default, right? What is my default? Is my default to go into prayer when things are happening or is my default to try to figure it out, which that is my default. My default is to try to figure things out. So this really just convicts me to be more intentional about my prayer life and spend more time in prayer because the more time you spend in prayer, the more it becomes a default for you to then go into prayer when things are happening. So that is it for this one. And until next time, I will talk to you later.